Approved solar eclipse safety glasses are a hot commodity. They have all sorts of special indications that you know you're getting the right thing. You're looking at some of them there. The ISO serial number is key. There have been reports of fakes and bogus glasses being sold in Toronto area, Kingston into Quebec. So there are lots of things to watch for. There are many, many questions about watching this eclipse safely. And we have for you today, I'm telling you, he is the man <laughs> when it comes to being the expert on solar eclipse eye safety. Dr. Ralph Chu is with me. He's the professor emeritus in optometry at the University of Waterloo, former president of the Royal Astronomical Society of the Toronto chapter. I could go on and on because your credentials are most impressive, sir, and I'm delighted to meet you. That's a pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. How many solar eclipses have you yourself seen personally? 29. 29? And your vision, I mean, you're wearing Still glasses, good. but you, you, you're okay. <laughs> yes. So you can do this safely. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You have to have the proper approach and the proper gear, and we have two hours of time with you to go over all sorts of questions. You know what I think I'd like to do to begin? I'd like to talk about the stakes of this, why we keep coming back to the safety yeah. issue, because it is critical. It is dangerous. What happens to the eye if you look at the eclipse naked eye? Yeah. Well, without the protective uh, filters in, in front of your eyes, you know, there's a lot of light energy coming from the sun. And while the front of the eye is a very good filter for a lot of that uh, radiation, there is that critical amount uh, of light from uh, wavelengths between roughly 400 nanometers and 1400 nanometers, which are visible light and near infrared, that will actually get to the back of the eye to form an image. Now, we aren't really worried too much about the infrared because when you look at the way in which light interacts with living tissue. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, long wavelengths are much, much less efficient at doing anything. Okay. But if you look at the blue and green wavelengths, the same wavelengths that have uh, you know, captured the imagination of people about the dangers of using a cell phone at night and things like that, uh, that light is much, much more efficient at causing damage. And what it does, when you focus that light on the back of the eye, it will initiate not only the uh, visual pigment reactions that cause vision but, uh, to occur, but also, at the same time, it is producing all of these nasty chemicals like uh, peroxide and so on inside the cell. And what those do is, over a period of time, damage the cell. Mm -hmm. So if you do enough of this, like people will do in looking at the sun unprotected for a minute or three minutes or whatever, right. enough of these products will eventually cause the cell to stop working. Like kill it, it'll burn it. Not it'll... necessarily okay. kill it, but it'll damage it to the extent that it can no longer support the visual so process. So this is on the retina, this is the this back is right on the, the retina. This is right the back of the eye. And in the retina, as I understand it, there are no pain sensors, so you exactly. won't even know that yep. this is happening. <clears throat> so is the damage then, if it, if it is such, is it permanent? Well, it depends on exactly how much damage there is. Mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of people, you know, they, uh, they have this, they wake up the next morning, they realize, uh, you know, at this distance, they can't uh, see the face of the person in front of them. Everything else is fine, but the details in the face are gone. Right there. So is it blurry? It's very blurry, or it may just be an amorphous gray blob, because what has happened is that the visual uh, uh, signals from those cells is basically uh, uh, cut down or eliminated altogether by the okay. damage. And so they come to see us. And the thing is that uh, at that point, all we can do is just, oh yeah, you've hurt yourself, and we're just going to have to wait for the next six months or a year to see, to see whether you Because there's no treatment healed. for that, is there? That's right. There's no effective treatment for it other than watchful waiting. So you might recover, but could it be permanent damage? Uh, you've got a 50% chance that your vision will come back to the same level that it was before. But if you manage to accumulate, uh, say, the equivalent of about, uh, say, three to five minutes of steady exposure, your chances of having a permanent loss of vision go up considerably. 
And there's this notorious case that I think we're going to be talking well, about. Well, I want to show this picture. Yeah. Why don't we bring it in first? Yeah. This goes back to the 2017 mm -hmm. eclipse in the United States. And this was a woman who looked up with the naked eye, realized she needed some protection, grabbed a pair of goggles, which we are going to talk about with Dr. Chu. But it turns out that they were not working. They weren't the right ones. They weren't safe enough. And look at this, because there's the crescent on the bottom, Dr. Yeah. Chu. What is that? That's, so that is exactly uh, that's the, the same shape. shape. Of the, yeah, that's the shape of the crescent sun that she was looking at. And, uh, you know, you, you can actually uh, see in the, uh, the actual paper that they took the time to look through the eclipse footage right. to um, uh, figure out exactly when she looked. And it looks like that exposure was around 10 minutes of, of actual time that she spent so she looking at so the So she sun. spent some concerted time with not proper yeah. protection, and that was the result. I mean, that's striking, isn't it? It shows you right there. Yeah. And it can be permanent. So I think we've made the case. Uh, do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So let's bring in some viewer questions, because Doris mm -hmm. Gates gets to start us off. Mm -hmm. She says, I hear that there are solar eclipse safety glasses. I want to know all about them. <laughs> Doris, thank you. You have Show me the proper one first of all, okay. Dr. Chu. Well, we have uh, one here. This is uh, actually um, one of the uh, types that... Um, was purchased by the University of Toronto to distribute to their alumni and so on. And uh, this is a genuine product. Okay. And uh, the way you use it is simply put it on like this and then look up at the sun. And very, very simple. Okay, I'm going to do it because I want to ask a couple of things. I don't have glasses. You put it on top of your glasses. That's right. We had a viewer question to that effect too. Mm -hmm. If you wear glasses, keep your glasses on and put these on top. Yeah, that's okay. right. Uh, wow. Wow. It is total blackout. Hello, <laughs> Doctor. It is total blackout. Yeah, that filter is taking the light from the sun and right. bring it down by a factor of two hundred thousand times. So, would this be a way of knowing that it, it's legit? It is complete blackness. If it were there, as I was mentioning, there have been bogus glasses sold a lot because people are making a lot of money from this yeah. eclipse. Might there be something you can tell just by looking through that it's not strong enough? Yes, if you can see any detail of scenery right. through a device like that, okay. then the filters may not be dark enough to actually be safe. Now, the unfortunate thing is that uh, with the timing, I haven't had an opportunity to actually put one of the bogus glasses through my uh, analytical through equipment. Through the test? Okay. To test I'm it. seeing the light, a little spot of light mm -hmm. here, but that's the only thing getting yeah. through. Well, okay. the studio lights, uh, especially the spots, are, yeah. uh, you know, almost as bright as the sun. So it, it's actually it's a, good test. a good test. Okay. Uh, uh, you could even use your cell phone to uh, check it, but what I'm finding is that um, even with the bogus ones, uh, the cell phone test doesn't work as well. Doris Gates, solar glasses. How can you be sure they are authentic and will protect your eyes? She wants to know all about it, so jump right in. Right, okay, well, I've got a genuine pair right here, okay. uh, which uh, has all of the uh, necessary labeling. Now, in getting these approved, as they say, uh, what has to be done is it is tested in a certified laboratory. Okay and uh, a technical report showing compliance is issued if the product is safe. And the Monarch product actually went through all of that. So when you say it's safe, so, it's that part. Could I just see that? It's the filter the, part, the filter how parts. much it cuts yeah. of the of the. Coming That's in. right. And you have to look, when you buy it, when you get a set of those glasses, what do you look for? There are special markings and indications. That's right. On this product, the name and address of the manufacturer has to be shown. Okay as well as the identification of the testing laboratory. So those uh, three pieces of information are key, in addition to a statement that says that the uh, product actually conforms or complies with the standard. That's the ISO standard, with, international standard. That's right. And that's 12312-2, is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. I've committed that to memory. <laughs> right. So you look for that number. That's right. And, and if they've got that report, that it all fits, and they have all that labeling information, then they are entitled to affix the ISO and 
the CE uh, marks on the product. Okay, so now, look for that. Now, yeah. the thing of it is... The can fakes. I, well, that's just because, and mm. I have to say, uh, Sean, thank you for your question. Very excited. Mm. But you can make some pretty good fakes these days. So what do, yeah. you, what do the fakes look like, and how do you know they're fake? Superficially, they look the same. They do. But the labeling is different. Okay. For one thing, uh, this just has the standard number on it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't say that it conforms. There are some weasel words here, a disclaimer, uh, about <laughs> the use of the product. Okay. There are none of the warnings or instructions that are part of the labeling requirement of the standard. Also, it says made in China. Okay, fair enough. But who made it? We don't know. Okay. Who tested it? There's no information on it here. And the other thing, can I try that on? Because yeah. I was looking last hour. Mm. I mean, the, how it blacks out is mm. really quite extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, this is, I mean, it's actually not too bad it in terms similar. of comparative blockage. It yeah. looks similar, yeah. but again, you have to watch You for don't that. know until you actually do the okay. test. But, uh, you know, the use of the uh, seals on this one is improper. All right. I have a question from Luc Juteau, who was saying that if you look at the legitimate ones, if you see that, if you read some of the fine print, it says, or these are the ones that he got from the Ottawa Library, mm -hmm. limited to three minutes continuous use intermittently for several hours. Mm -hmm. Can you look, if you want to look at the whole, let's say, hour of, you know, coming up to the point of totality, mm -hmm. can you do it constantly or should you look away to give your eyes a break? Well, in theory, you could actually look continuously, mm -hmm. but you'd be pretty uncomfortable doing that. Okay. Because the sun's high in the sky, you've got to look up like this and you know, end up with a, a bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, so those instructions really are to try to make sure that people who are using the device actually will do it comfortably mm -hmm. as well as safely. Okay. But the filters are dark enough that you could look at the sun indefinitely if you really wanted to. Sunglasses, my normal pair of sunglasses, that's not dark enough? No, not no. at all. Uh, these filters in the uh, proper eclipse glasses and visors, you know, and there are different forms of those that I've brought along, like this uh, visor here, okay. and these permanent glasses oh, those like are the, this. Okay, those are also oh, that's another model. Really, oh, wow, uh, those are they're a really great look. <laughs> this but is a, okay. This is all be of fun. these filters. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that is. All good. of these filters will take away uh, uh, the light to the extent of one part in two hundred thousand. The best you can do in a pair of glacier glasses, which is the darkest thing you can get at the sunglass store, uh, is one percent transmission, one part in a hundred. So that's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. We got a question from Charlotte, whose friend Pat is planning to use his welding mask to view the eclipse. Is that safe? As long as it's a shade 13 or shade 14 mm -hmm. filter that's placed into the welding mask. Uh, the problem with those filters is they are available, but mostly as a special order item for, uh, from the welding stores. So, uh, you know, you can't necessarily go down to Canadian Tire, for example, mm -hmm and ask for a welding uh, shade 13 from their uh, counter and expect to get it. Okay. It may not be there. Let's come back to Paula's question. I asked it last hour, but I think it mm -hmm. bears repeating in case someone didn't see our conversation. Uh, for someone who wears glasses, as you do, mm -hmm. do you, what do you do with the solar eclipse glasses? Very simple. Just slip them on in front. Like this. <laughs> and they'll stay put. So you and keep your glasses put. on. Yeah. Okay. That is good. Now, if it's cloudy, as it's so likely to be, do you still need yeah. to wear them? Probably not, because if you don't have an unimpeded view of the sun, uh, uh, you know, the sun will not be bright enough, even if it punches through the clouds, to be seen through the filter, uh, you know, on a cloudy day. But you might still want to be safe than sorry. Bring, you know, you bring them along yeah. just in case there's a clear spot that opens up in the cloud. You right. just never know. Uh, you know, I hate to think of the number of total eclipses that I've seen in my time where, you know, it was cloudy right up until the critical moment and then magically the clouds opened. Wow. And, you know, it does happen. If it magically opens and people happen to be in the path of totality, this is what they're going to see. This is the diamond mm -hmm. ring just yes. before totality. Yeah. During totality, for those who are right in the path, those minutes, those scarce moments, you can actually look with the naked eye. Safe. That's right. Right. Yeah. Because uh, everything is blocked. That's right, and that's what we eclipse chasers, as they uh, they call us, uh, look for. You know, that's what drives us to actually see that view. You know, from diamond ring to diamond ring. Uh, the problem is that 
you know, there's a lot of other people who are watching this broadcast. Who are, Far more than uh, those who are yeah. going to see totality. They'll be in the area of partial eclipse. Like here in Toronto, for example, you get a 99.95% uh, coverage. But there's enough bright sun visible right at the edge of the, the moon uh, at maximum eclipse around 3.18 p.m. next week. If it's a clear sky, that's still too dangerous to look at with the unaided eye. You know what? That's a reminder I'm going to keep delivering between now and Monday because I think that's true. The vast number of Canadians, and there are millions of Canadians who are in that penumbra, the penumbra, yeah. you know, who are not going to see who are in the partial eclipse zone. They yeah. are at risk because of that fact. So. Yeah, they've got to use the glasses at all times. Okay. It's only those lucky million or so who, you know, get into the uh, path of totality who will be able to take them away and then look at the corona unimpeded. So I would like to ask one more thing because I could go on for hours. So let me put this on again. So tell me again, or tell me if you wouldn't mind, in terms of when you need to put them on and how you put them on. I was reading that maybe you should sort of look so you don't yeah, get whole, damaged. You should yeah. sort of look down to put them on and then yeah. you can look up safely. The, the main thing is, uh, and uh, again, this one happens to be a legitimate one too. Okay. So the thing is that if, you know, the studio lights are, are great Good for example. this, because if you just look at the light and mm -hmm. do this, you're going to get an after image for a moment as uh, the glass goes on because right. you've been looking at that bright light. So, yeah, you just don't look at the sun. Okay, put them do on. Do that and then look okay. up. And at what point in the eclipse? Just when you see the moon starting to pass in front or at what point? At any time that the, um, uh, the surface of the sun is visible. Okay. You have to use the glasses. Now, that diamond ring, uh, uh, when you look at that through the viewer, uh, it will appear as a single bright, uh, single spot mm -hmm. of light on the edge of the moon. Right. So, and it will be shrinking down very, very quickly. So when it shrinks down uh, and disappears, that's, That's the when signal? you take the glasses take off. off the glasses. Yeah. And then the minute you see that spark up again, back yeah. on, That diamond go. ring comes back, and you'd be amazed at how quickly the world brightens up as the moon moves away. Isn't that incredible? Uh, and, you know, the, the thing is that, you know, the, I've seen this, uh, you know, uh, in 19 total eclipses out of the 29 that I've seen, and it never grows old. And, you know, all of us who actually have experienced that, it's an unforgettable experience. And Hence, we're you're off to Houston to watch your 20th total solar eclipse. That's right. <laughs> and you're doing that tomorrow, but I'm so grateful that you gave mm -hmm. us some time today. Thank you for all of your questions, because obviously safety is top of mind for many people watching this morning. And thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Monday is going to be very special, I think. Indeed it will. All right, Dr. Chu, thank you again.